you know in yoga physical movements alone are unimportant yoga is an all round development where we have to bring the body the senses organs of action organs of perception mind intelligence consciousness and conscience these are the various vehicles of this human system in yoga each and every part has to be made to activate where the organs of action normally the flesh the fibers of the flesh the spindles of the flesh when we move they are activate then we have to make the organs of action to balance exactly with the skin which is the organ of perception so with the combination of the act body action and the organ of perception a new light dawns in that new light intelligence develops to penetrate the body because unless and until the human body from the foot to the head right to left is known very well the unknown cannot be approached so all these yogic postures brings the intelligence to flow in the system like the river as a single unit where the river from the mountain to the sea is one here in these various postures the nervous system the circulatory system is made to become one with the intelligence so that it is ever present as a single unit and that is where the intelligence is brought to observe moment to moment not only to be excited with movement but also excited with action then the mind the self the body they all unite together you know it is a, a common belief that we think that as we have grown we may not be able to do it nobody realizes that the i the me the pronoun i the pronoun me the pronoun you the pronoun thy has no age the self has no age so it is the mind which introduces fear when one the person has grown so it is the mind which has to be cult- cultivated cultured to face life as such there is only for good things or right things people ask about the age is there a age limit for sex all are interested even though they are grown ups they are old but the temptations are there similarly why they should be afraid of doing yoga even if they are grown so definitely there is absolutely no age limit as we take food every day exercises or movements are essential to each individual every day so food if you don't eat food at all then i say don't do anything but when we have to take food it has to be digested to how in order to digest we have to do something as i said before the gates of the human system is only circ- respiratory system and circulatory system these two gates are opens are opened in the practices of yoga more than any other system of exercises and that's why if these two systems are kept healthy your man is ever healthy so as such when once there is a good health age do not count at all so uh, irrespective of age they can do only there is a minimum practice because they have not used their joints they have not used their muscles they have to go slow beyond that there is no other limit you know yoga no doubt covers the various shapes of man children are very active they love to have variations and newness freshness in approaches 
So they have tremendous vanity, they have tremendous strength, they are not afraid of injuries and as we all know children recover faster than adults, grown-ups. So naturally when we have to teach children we have to see that the child do not get bored by the art. So we have to keep them alert, active, so they need speed, they need strength, they need speed and they need variety. So postures have to be changed in such a way so that they feel moment to moment the freshness in what they are doing which makes the children get interested in this art. So we have to treat them in the beginning only on the physical level because they cannot go beyond the body. Then they learn the physical movements. Then when they are grown, say age of 16, 17, then we can speak to them about the mind. Then when they are growing a little more, then we can speak to them about the self. So naturally for children, we have to pay attention to the well-being and the speed, the variety to be introduced. Then they love yoga because I am teaching children from the age of 6 to the age of 13 where I've got about 80 to 90 students on weekly classes. Believe me or not, not one student leaves the hall even though we teach them non-stop for two hours. That shows that we have to ignite interest in them. So out of igniting interest in children builds them to become something to develop their personalities when they grow. So that is how we have to teach children, giving them varieties and speed. They are full of vanities, remember that also. Children are full of vanity. As such, the exercise should be of vigor and vitality, not soft flow movements which does not attract them at all. So that's all the change which we have to do. Yes, except fever, whether it is functional disorder or organic disorder, yoga plays a tremendous role. I have patients who have, be, who have to be operated but they never underwent operation. Those medical people who said that these people cannot get back health, they got back health. We run two classes, medical classes in Pune, where we have about 50 to 60 patients on each class. Here, in yoga, there are wetting and drying system. You can block an organ and supply the blood to the needed organ. If you want an exercise for the liver, how to exercise the liver, the contraction, the expansion, the lateral movement of the liver, or the spleen or the pancreas. We have postures which can play a very good role by blocking the other system and wetting that area so that that organ bathes in blood. And there are certain poses where we can allow the blood to withdraw from that organ and take to the other area. The beauty of yoga is that each cell in our system when they are born it should not be born as a stillborn cell, but as a lively cell so that it can end, supply the energy and have a natural death. So yoga being oxidizes the system tremendously. Many of the postures are resting postures. As such, it can be done at the time of convalescence or it can be done at the time of illness. If you are made to lie on the bed for 10 days or 12 days, we say you lie down on the bed, lie down in this position so that the kidney gets a sufficient supply of blood or the heart getting sufficient supply of blood so that the organ is made to become healthy even in that position. We just say instead of lying down, lie this way. So that is how yoga is done because yoga are postures. They are poses. So being posing, you instead of posing sleeping in a sleeping position, we say position this way and you get the benefit. That's why it can be easily taken 
and can be practiced by anyone without any fear, provided we know what to do according to the conditions of the individual's health or individual's disease. I can I have treated for nephritis, children suffering nephritis. So we work, we supply the blood to the kidneys by blocking supply to the various areas because when we do the certain poses like bridges, the blood do not supply to various areas. It's all accumulated in the blood, in the in the kidney, which makes the kidney to activize. So also extension of the liver rotation of the liver where the blood is drawn to that area like that each organic yoga is not a physical exercise yoga is a physiological exercise where organically they work more and that's why it's a it's very good to take even at the time of convulsions i have seen that even if the doctors have to operate they send me so i train them for about two three months and the patient after the operation recovers within 10 days. That means the area, the area which has to be operated by teaching certain poses, we take off the stress on that area. As the stress is taken, naturally the operation will be successful. The doctor say I was successful. So that is the beauty of yoga. Only one should know exactly what to give, how much to give, when to give, when not to give. Majority of the people find it very difficult, especially in the Western countries, because here the weather is cold, the sinus passage gets blocked here. Due to the blockage of this sinus passage, the moment they go to head balance, they get blocked. So naturally they cannot breathe or the eyes becomes red. Or some people hold their breath after the inhalation in order to raise the leg and that not only increases the pressure but also blocks the throat or they suck the tongue, close the throat, they find it difficult to breathe. If such things happen, that means blockage of the nostrils, heaviness in the breathing, burning sensation in the eyes, flushing of the head. They have to do, you know, as a car has got forward gear, reverse gear, neutral gear. So also in yoga, there are standing poses, inverted poses, inverted poses of the reverse gear. Forward movements are not the forward gears. So in between there are neutral gears. One cannot change from the forward, from the one gear to the second gear without coming to the neutral. So there are several neutral poses in between. So if we add those neutral poses like half tongue, tongue bending forward, forward stretches, then what happens? There is a freedom in the sinus passage. Then the person can do head balance. Thank you. You know, as long as there is effort, effortful efforts means certain strain, certain demand from the body. When the effortless effort transforms itself into an effortless effort, from that day on, we, the joy and the pleasure of doing the process sets in. And that is the time we say that the duality of fight and non-fight, aggressiveness and passivity disappears and there is a balance between these two and the poise sets into the system and one starts enjoying. The peace comes when the effortful effort ceases and becomes an effortless effort. And from that day on, yoga becomes a pleasure. You know, yoga is a subject which deals with the intellectual problems, emotional problems and instinctive problems. As such, postures which is a part of yoga 
is yoga it cannot be separated as if it is completely a different subject away from yoga when we are practicing the postures in the beginning we certainly think for health only well being after a certain time when the health has been achieved the postures play a different role as mind of a practitioner goes towards the realization of the self in the beginning the organs of perception and mind are very close to each other that's why we are tempted to the external environments while we are practicing the asanas without being becoming lonely asanas take away the mind from the organs of perception and moves closer towards the self so that's why as we go on practicing it becomes a spiritual asana till then we have to work physically in order to keep each and every part of our body the circulatory system respiratory system glandular system digestive system uh, excretory system and we have to do various postures for the glands to bathe in blood so that they can secrete the hormones to maintain a balanced mind a balanced body and balanced self health covers body mind and soul yoga is a union of body with the mind and mind with the soul so that all the three are one then there is one cannot differentiate between physical health mental health spiritual health and that is pure divine health from the body to the soul